Mavericks down, trying to go to work. Sickhouse will have it. He scores! If nobody touched it, that'll be his first career goal as a Maverick. Moving from left to right above the circles. He's on one goal above the right hash mark. Oh, they're picking up that puck for him. And he's coming through. There you go. Campbell Sickhouse. Livingstone gets it back. Trying to get down to the goal line. Hobble got it. Turn. Fired. And the Mavericks. And Cole finishes the play on a tap in, and the Mavericks have the lead. Trying to clear it out. Knocked down. Mavericks have puck control. There's Sandler shot. He scores! Ryan Sandler on a low driver on the left side to the right of the post. And the Mavericks have taken the lead back at 3 2. From BLC Studios in Mankato, Minnesota, this is the Maverick Hockey Live Podcast. Presented by Duncan. With your host, Shane Frederick. This is the Maverick Hockey Live podcast presented by Duncan. I'm Shane Frederick. I'm the host. And joining me today in the first episode of the new season is the head coach himself, Mike Hastings. How you doing, Hasty? I'm good, Freddie. Good to see you. Good to see you, too. Um, it's, you know... We're here. Our college hockey season has started already. We're we're off to a little late start on the podcast, but there's been a lot going on, and it's been a short off season for you. Yeah, it has been, but a good one. You know, I mean, anytime I get to hang with you, it, it just reminds me of, you know, uh, been here a little while, and and going all the way back to my start here, and you being a part of that, and and uh, you know, it's just like a little home week. We get to get together and <laughs> relax and and chat a little bit of hockey. Uh, I love it. Uh, you're coming off a, a, a big weekend, a big opening weekend for the Mavericks. Uh, a, a really, uh, I would say, a pretty good split uh, with Minnesota in a top five matchup. Uh, the Gophers being number two in the country and the Mavericks being number five. You go up to Mariucci and uh, you fall four to one on Friday, but you come home on a night with a big crowd and you're and you're um, putting banners in the rafters and uh uh, lots of pressure after I think losing that first game, and, and you come out with a really exciting three-two uh, uh, victory and a, and a great college hockey game. Uh, can you talk a little bit about that game and kind of your couple days later, what you think of it? Yeah, you know what, you uh, Nutter and I were talking, my associate head coach, and you know Todd, we we're we we're just chatting on, on you know last year we were fortunate that we we won somewhat consistently on Fridays and from, from the coaching standpoint that that gives you a little bit of comfort going into Saturday uh, and uh, reality kicked us right in the teeth where all of a sudden you're playing a team like Minnesota and you, you lose on Friday and now all of a sudden, you know, the nerves get going a little bit because you, you don't find a way to get Saturday done. You're 0 and 2 you're a little bit behind the eight ball and you've got a uh, very accomplished Duluth team coming to town. Um, and you're, you know, you, you start thinking, boy, we're, we're going to have to get some things done. And so to me, it was a, it was a big bounce back for us and really the way that it happened too. Um, because, you know, if you take the short window and you and I were talking a little bit before we started taping, you know, you, you, you go to Omaha and Omaha beats you pretty soundly start to finish behind, take penalties, uh, goaltending is kind of a question. Uh, we just didn't have a lot of really good things happen. And then you go into Friday's game and you're wondering, I thought Rancier played pretty good on, on Friday and we were in that game. I don't know if it's a 4-1 yep. game. Uh, that's how it ends. And I want to give credit to Minnesota for, you know, scoring the empty netter and extending the lead and doing what they needed to do to have success at home. And then we wanted to come and try and replicate that. And, you know, first one gets zipped by, <laughs> zipped by Rance here. And all of a sudden you're like, oh boy, here we go. And then we take a five minute major. We're down five on three. The one thing that I think I want to make sure and say it's uh, is, uh, the appreciation for the crowd being there because yeah. Once we were able to get that killed off, we drew energy not only from the penalty kill, but from the crowd and allowed us to get our feet underneath us. Yeah, you could really feel that in, in the building, I think. Uh, and you, you're appreciative, uh, you know, myself being at a lot of games over the last 22 years, uh, you know, feeling the, the Mankato crowds become 
uh, more into the games and more aware of kind of situational hockey and things like that. Not that they always weren't, but there were times when, when they weren't and you go to other buildings and you see that. So something like the, you know, the recognition of what's happening in a, in a, a five on three situation for almost a minute that leads into the rest of the five, of a five minute major that you have to kill off. And, and, uh, you know, you just, I, it's one of my favorite little things about college hockey in general is uh, every time you're able to get a clear or ice the puck when you're on a, a penalty kill and you feel that crowd um, get a little bit louder a little every energy. time you do it, every time you do it, and then finally the guy comes out of the box and the crowd kind of goes crazy. And it really seemed like from that point on, uh, even though they did, come, you know, you, you were able to take a lead and they, uh, they tied it again, it just felt like, uh, you you were in pretty decent control of that game, or didn't let things get uh, too far away from you when uh, some of that momentum went back on Minnesota side. Well, and you you looked at both teams; they weren't making a lot of mistakes early. It was a little bit of a chess match early, and it wasn't. If I'm in that crowd, not sitting in the seat that I am, I'm kind of like, let's <laughs> let's get some of this going here right. a little bit. As far as somebody scoring a goal or making a play, and you know, Snuggerud, who I think is very, very talented and a guy that you're going to hear a lot of his name talked about at the University of Minnesota, uh, whether it's this year or the following year. I don't think it'll be much more than that. Right. Um, if it is, <laughs> if it is those two years, a pretty special player. And he comes in and throws one just under the bar. And I think he definitely meant to shoot it where he shot it. And uh, he had four goals on the weekend. And, and, I thought we handled it pretty well. And for us to be able to do that against a team like that, that defensive core is as good a defensive core as I think there is in the country. Uh, I don't know who would be able to march out a different group than that and say that they're better. Um, and, you know, so I thought we did a really good job at, at finding a way to get it back to one and then really just building from there and, and having a lead for the first time two to one having it evaporate in <laughs> about 65 seconds That's right. um, and then really play, I think uh, a really good third period one getting the lead and then playing, I think in a calm manner over the back half of that last six minutes and being able to ice it. Yeah. And that was, you know, looking at, I've just got the box score in front of me, but that, that was, that seemed like a, a typical way that you have won games for a while. When you get the third period lead, you outshot them 14 to five in the third period. You didn't give them much of a sniff at all. Um, you, you know, once you had that lead and you were able to, uh, to salt that game away, um, and, but you're doing it with, you know, a, a very different back end. Obviously you talked about Keenan Rancier in goal. His name is not Dryden McKay. Uh, and you have uh, a defensive core that, uh, you know, is half gone from last year. So you have, th you know, you have some experienced guys filling in those spots, but not, uh, not great, um, you know, game experience uh, over, over the years other than, you know, Akito Hiroshi, uh, Jake Livingstone, and of course, uh, Andy Carroll coming back for a fifth year. Well, and again, with the three guys that you're talking about there, they're not, you know, there's one super senior in, in Andy Carroll. The other two are juniors. Yeah. They're not seniors. Uh, and, and again, I think they're special players. I think you saw that. I think uh, Jake Livingstone did himself well this last weekend. I'm mm -hmm. um, playing on a very big stage, and so did Akita Rossi. They played major minutes on Friday and Saturday and were able to do that and be successful at it. And then, you know, you look at the group after that with, with Malinowski, who hasn't had a, a tremendous amount of experience. Bellini is, you know, in, in less a single digit games. Right. Um, you look at Psychos and, and even in the game that he played on Friday, he didn't play any minutes, you know, many minutes. And then you get to, to the, the idea of what we're going to be under, you know, with the house bouncing a little bit and a lot of energy in the, in the building at that time. And I, I think you look at it and, those guys get an opportunity to show themselves. Uh, Wheeler, I think, did a really good job as a freshman and playing major minutes. I thought the guys handled themselves pretty well. And so we're going to need that group if you look at what walked out. And uh, today I reached out and just said hello to, to Jack McNeely. He's in the, uh, the, the, the business world and, and Reggie Lutz and a couple of the guys that, that are gone, um, you know, and just talked a little bit about the weekend. But the guys that were in the lineup, I think, did a really good job of finding a way to get us a win. And that's, you know, you just don't know, you know, going into the season, you know, who's going to be able to show up when the lights are on. And I mean, you mentioned Minnesota and their, and, and their back end. I think they, uh, they don't have quite as many question marks going into the season as, uh, as, as the Mavericks do. But um, what do you think the key was as far as, you know, 
bringing in some of those younger players, you know, into the fold and have them kind of play the key roles that they did. I mean, your, your veterans certainly step, stepped up and you, you mentioned Jake Livingstone, for instance, but uh, you had a lot of other players. You mentioned Christian Fitzgerald the other night. And I think I noted like two big block shots that, you know, after their, the goalie was pulled, um, uh, playing six on five, um, you know, you really saw some buy-in from some players, and suddenly, if you you kind of took all the numbers away, people would go like, "This looks like an MSU team." Hey, you know what? And I'm glad you brought up uh, Pitsy's name because not often do you see freshmen out in that role at that time in a game of that magnitude. But he earned it. The night before, I thought he played very well mm-hmm. in some limited minutes. Um, but then even as the game was going on 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 Saturday, he's one that goes in and makes a really good uh, play along a wall, good stick pressure, creates a turnover, it gets to Morton, which then gets to Sandlin, which gives us a lead. And, um, you know, once you lose your second line center, like we did with Sillier, things change. You know, yeah. and we had, we had a couple other guys in the lineup that maybe weren't playing as well as uh, – Fitzgerald was and so elevated him up the lineup. He took advantage of that. And uh, you look at a guy like Psychos, you know, being able to to get a puck to the net uh, the way that he did and, and finding a way with a screen, which again, Fitzgerald was standing right in front of the goaltender, which didn't allow close to see the, the, the puck. Um, we're going to need those guys to step up because they, you know, they need those minutes. And when you go back to recruiting, uh, and you look at you look at Wheeler, and I'll, I'll even say Psychos, and I want to give again Todd Cannot a lot of credit. But those guys, when you're recruiting them, you're telling them, "Hey, there's going to be opportunity here," and that's what it is. And then it's up to them to take advantage of it. And I think you saw those guys step up, the guys that we've already brought up, and um, it's going to be no different this week when we play a very good <laughs> Duluth team. You bring you bring up Duluth, and uh, I know you talked about this last year with me, and um, you put together a pretty challenging early season schedule the last few years. And then you kind of laugh about it uh, once the schedule comes out, like, what <laughs> what are you doing? Um, but it, it obviously it gets people excited. You're playing these in-state rivalries. Uh, you know, after you play UMD, you're going to St. Cloud. Um, the fans love it. But also the way, you know, college hockey is in this state right now, uh, you know, a lot of really good teams. I mean, a lot of top, you know, besides yourselves, Minnesota, the the rankings came out today, Minnesota stayed two, you stayed five, Minnesota Duluth is four, St. Cloud State is nine or 10. Um, You know, Bemidji had a good weekend last weekend. So I think, uh, you know, you're, it's, it's a challenge, but uh, you you throw everybody right into the fire and you find out who you are a little bit. (laughs) You do. And you know, what's, what's, uh, I will say the sobering piece of that is, it's one thing to schedule them. You've got to win some yeah. of them. Um, if you don't, you can be a bit down the the food chain when you start talking about pairwise and your book of business. Mm-hmm. But I think the expectations because of the players that have come through here before this group, uh, the expectation is, is to have that. I think the community started to expect it. Um, uh, you know, our, our guys are always asking, you know, during the summer, what's our what's our non conference schedule going to be? Who are we playing? When are we playing them? And you know, again, Friday, uh, <laughs> looking at that, and coming back Saturday, there was there, there might have been a little question in the coach's mind: Is this such a great idea? But at the end of the day, you've got to let the players go out and play and put them in an environment that that challenges them. And both Friday and Saturday night were in challenging environments, and I thought our guys uh, did a good job. And it's it's hard though too because you look at a, a season um, is you know if you get to the Frozen Four as as you have the last two years, that's a six month season, and that's a that's a long stretch. And and you're you're basically saying we're going to start off playing the big guns right away. Um, travel's not bad because it's all in state, but uh, you know you're you're setting things up for, for the long haul with a, with a, with a difficult, uh, tough road right out of the gate. Yeah. But again, you, you, you know, you've got to build your book of business every year and I'm sure there's a lot of business people out there right now that, (laughs) and, and you being in what you're in right now, you, you, you have a really good year. And I know the people in power, they look at you and say, okay, what have you done for me lately? (laughs) You know? And, and so, you know, we've got a very vibrant, rabid, you know, group that we 
still need to keep feeding because their expectations are at a, at a pretty high level. And so um, I just think that it's a good thing when, when players come into our program or when we're out recruiting and we talk about what the expectations are, right? we don't want to shy away from that. Um, and again, there's, there's peaks and valleys and that's, what's going to happen this year. You know, it could happen this weekend. Sure. You know, what is the opportunity? And so trying to get our guys to really focus on their dailies uh, and 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 understand that if you can have a good day, you can have a good two days. And if you can get to two, you can maybe get to a week and try and build on that. And I think the only way you do that is by going out and testing yourself as consistently as you can. And we're trying to get prepared for our regular season schedule which is in our conference, which this year you see Northern Michigan go out to, to Colgate and win two games on the road. You see Bowling Green uh, go to Michigan State and beat Michigan State in their own building. Um, you know, Bemidji splitting with uh, ASU, um, who just went in and played very two very tight games against Duluth. So um, we're going to have our hands full when we get to the league, and so it's important that we're prepared for that. When, when you uh, kind of build build up a, a season like this and, and build up that schedule, uh, especially this year with uh, so much turnover, um, you know, the, the expectations, as you mentioned, remain high. You, you try to, to maintain that, but also know that there's a lot of questions. So how do you balance the idea of trying to build that team, like you mentioned, to the regular season? Um, because you still have a lot of question marks. One weekend doesn't answer everything. One game doesn't answer everything. So how do you balance that with the idea of needing to try to win some games for for pairwise and for everything else that's important down the stretch with trying to also just evolve your team into what it's going to be come December or, or January when you really look to feel like it's uh, you know you, you have an identity? Well, it really, it's, it's one that I think is, you've got a plan, but you better be flexible and you better understand when to push, when to back off. Um, again, we get back from Omaha and still a lot of questions, more questions than answers. <laughs> I can tell you that. And, and really this weekend, you know, how that game played out on Saturday, I'm very thankful for right now based upon how we reacted to it. Um, there could have been a bit of an implosion there when you go down five on three to the group that's getting paraded out on the other side. Right. You've got to find a way to, you know, and, and again, one of our best penalty killers, David Cilia, is the one that gets tossed. Yeah. Um, and again, I do want to quote on that a little bit. We did get the NCAA oh. rule book and they showed us the video. And one of the things that uh, they went through was, you know, th that there's a standalone five now where you don't right. have to lose a player. Um, if it's deemed that, you know, the a player turned his back at the, at the time. And so we, we discussed that at the bench a little bit. And <laughs> obviously I didn't get my point across and they weren't, they weren't buying that. So we had to go out and, and David's gone. And I just thought our group really, really bound together at that time. And, and as a coach, you're asking that, how do you balance it? I have no idea. I don't know what's going to happen there. I wish I could say I had a, an unbelievable confidence that that was going to get done. You don't know until somebody goes through that. How is a, a player going to react? How is Rand Sear going to react after he gives up that short side goal to, to Snuggerud? And is he going to be able to go and shut the door and play as well as he did? Because we broke down multiple times. They right. had they had a couple of 2 one a couple of 2 one ones and Rand st stood tall. Yeah. And so th that's the experience. Uh, that's how you hopefully can build, you know, some toughness, some mental toughness and, um, we're going to have to have that this weekend. And that bodes well for, for a guy like Rancier, but you could have easily gone into Saturday's game and said, you know, there are so many questions in goal, you know, even if he played, you know, fairly well on Friday, which, you know, watching, I watched the game on television and, and kind of thought that, you know, the three that he gave up were, you know, not a lot he could do on, on, on any of those. And all three were Jimmy Snuggerud <laughs> as well. <laughs> um, but, uh, you know, you could have easily gone with uh, one of your other two goaltenders just to say, you know, you have to figure out, you know, who, who's the next guy. Because, um, you know, I covered your teams for a long time, Hasty, and you never would commit to who was playing in goal on a Friday night until 
I'd say about three and a half years ago. And then it was like, you know, then I didn't even ask anymore because we all knew the answer. Well, I wish I had that comfort and that's not a shot at my guys by any means. It's just, they're building their book of business right now. And, you know, we're still going to find out because Rance isn't going to run the table. I can tell you that right now, because uh, I think Tracy comes in with a very strong resume in what he's done at very important times for his team previous to getting here and mentioned winning that a, he, he won a USHL yeah. Clark Cup championship last Goal year. Tend- USA goaltender of the yep. year. And if you look at the history of those guys, uh, they're pretty good college goaltenders. Yeah. Um, and so, you know, he came in here with the idea that he'd have an opportunity and he'll get one. Uh, and again, I just, I, I'm sure there were quite a few people, even within my staff that were wondering <laughs> what I was doing on Saturday. And, and at times I, I you know, now it looks like a good decision, but it might not have been. Yeah. Uh, but he he showed his worth and went out and found a way to get it done. And kudos to him. It, you know, that so it's now it's guys taking advantage of opportunities, as you've said before, and and uh, but also trying to, to figure out, you know, give out give guys some opportunities to play because they because those questions still remain a little bit un- unanswered. Well, and it's it's that's the life of a freshman. Um, and here's what. I think happens whether it's here, Duluth, Minnesota, North Dakota, wherever. Um, we're we're coaches of human nature uh, more than we are of of anything else. Because uh, let's say it's a, a sophomore that comes back after a really good freshman year, and you and I have talked about this multiple times, yeah. where somebody will come out and they'll they'll have an unbelievable freshman year, and I'll, I'll use a guy like Jake Uremko. I think he was runner up for uh, College Hockey News uh, Freshman of the Year. 40 plus points in his freshman year and then comes back and takes a half a step back. Well, okay. Why is that happen? You're not sure. Do you get comfortable? Do you, you know, do you feel okay now just because I'm going to be a sophomore, a junior or senior, things are going to be easier. Not in this world, right? I mean, it's, it's like having that one good year of, of a real good number on your sales ledger. And the next year, things just don't quite go in the same way. And, and you run into somebody that, you know, boy, that goaltender made that save or I didn't get the break that I needed here. And our guys are going through that right now. You look at, you know, and I use Wilson, uh, who maybe had a little bit of a, a coming out party. I think at Omaha played very well offensively. And then on the backside defensively he struggled a little bit on Saturday and didn't get as many minutes. And I'm, you know, sat down with him today and we talked about uh-huh. it, you know, and just said, Hey, those are the peaks and valleys. And our job now as, as a team is to continue on our deals and get better. And, and I know that's not real good <laughs> radio. It's not real good TV. It's kind of your day to day and it's just what we're doing right now. And we're going to need those guys to continue to grow, but I like the direction that some of them are going. And now we need to get some of our horses running in the right direction. And I think if we do that, we're going to be okay. Uh, we mentioned a couple of times, you got Minnesota Duluth coming to town this weekend. Uh, you've played them a lot the last few years, uh, developed a nice rivalry. You have uh Scott Sandlin over there on the other bench, good friend of yours. Of course, uh, his son Ryan is uh, a senior already uh, for, for your team, but scored a huge goal on, on Saturday night, um, scored a lot of goals last season. I think he had 21 goals, uh, really nice season for him. And uh, I think he led you in shots on goal on Saturday as well yeah. and uh, not afraid to shoot the puck. So No, I, you <laughs> but, know, but well, he's good at it. <laughs> <laughs> so, I mean, he, he, you look at, that Sandy and just uh, mentioning that Scott Sandal and do consider him and Wendy uh, good friends of our families, Jeanne and myself. And um, I can't believe he's already a senior. I guarantee you, Wendy can't believe he's a senior. <laughs> um, and you know what? It's just he's he's put together a really good book of business for himself. Um, for him going out and having twenty one goals, having an opportunity to sign an NHL contract last year. Uh, deciding that he wanted to come back and continue to round out his game as he's working. Uh, you know, he's, he's already graduated, uh, okay. a very bright well, kid, yeah. um, you know, working on a master's and uh, just trying to fill out the rest of his game and uh, look forward to, you know, the journey with him this year because he'll be gone. And uh, he just provides, I think, consistency uh, to our lineup and he's, he's hard. He's heavy. He's a pain to play against. Um, I like the ways he's shooting the puck right now because there's a lot of confidence there. 
Um, and we're going to need him to continue that. And hopefully he can, he can be as effective as he has been against Duluth in the past. It, uh, just that, that rivalry, uh, another, another in-state rivalry. What, what's it like to play them? Kind of, what are you expecting for this weekend? It's hard. <laughs> <laughs> it's stressful preparing for them because, you know, you look at them and they've got a line now of Olson, James, and beyond the guys that have done it before for them. They've got a first round draft pick in Isaac Howard, who, you know, has already scored his first collegiate goal. You look at him back at the blue line with Kaiser and Gallatin and, and the group that they have. And then Stasekel's come in and I think their save percentage between the two of them is around 940, which it usually is with Duluth. They're, Unbelievably prepared, well coached, yep. um, always good in the special teams. Uh, they can beat you with their depth. They're okay playing a close game. Um, yes, there's, they are. <laughs> there's nobody, I believe, in college hockey that has put together the run that they've put together when you start talking about winning at the most important time of the year. Yep. Um, and so I think a lot of that credit has to go to Scott, uh, his staff, and he has had different people on his staff he just continues to find a way to get it done um and so for us it's a tall it's a tall task but it's one that i know will be better going through it and it's definitely keeping the guys attention this week i know they're focused on trying to get better every day because if we don't it'll be a long weekend uh you know it's it's interesting you know how quickly you have to put uh last year in the rearview mirror but let me just ask you a little bit uh since this is the first uh uh, time we've had a, a chance to talk, uh, you know, on, on the podcast, uh, since, uh, last spring, but, uh, you know, and it was short, short summer, you went from the frozen four to the world championships. And I'm sure from there you had players coming in for summer and, uh, and skating and everything else. And, you know, you were you able to enjoy things a little bit, were you able to kind of reflect a little bit on the, on the, how last season was, was, I know you would have loved to have obviously won that final game, but yeah. uh, what a, what a great season and a, and a, and a great run at the end. Of fortune, you know what, blessed to go through it. Even just reminiscing a little bit, I would say this weekend it, as I told you, when we walked in today, you know, reached out to, to, you know, Jack McNeely and, and Reggie Lutz and, um, you know, Edwin Hookinson's going to be coming. All three of them are coming to the game on Friday. Oh, and I told him to make sure and make sure and stop by and say hello. Uh, you know, had got a text from uh, Mackie uh, who said, Hey, you know what? Congratulations on the win. It's always nice beating Minnesota, but I'm not sure about the white helmets. So <laughs> <laughs> you still like, you, you know, you like that they're still watching and, and they feel, they feel ownership that they can go ahead and say, Hey, I don't know about this or about that. And for me, uh, that's what it's all about, you know, and, and so blessed to have gone through last season and really my time here, um, you know, it was the world championships was a great learning experience for me. Um, being able to have my wife and both children come over with us for a little while. It was, it was over there for almost a month. That was in Finland, correct? Yep, yep. yep. And they were able to come over. So we, we made some memories as a family that way. And then, uh, you know, again, fortunate that the university has allowed me to surround myself with uh, Paul Kirtland, Todd Connaught, because when I was gone, I know that things here at the house were still be taken care of. Um, and they were. Um, and so it, summer, as it does for everybody, it went by really fast. Uh, but um, yeah, you know what, uh, us coaches, it's no different. We're, you know, when you ask your players to turn the page and go to the next one, we have to do the same thing. And and so, you know, last Saturday when we were able to put the banners and, and unveil them and have it done in front of our crowd and being able to get that first win under our belt. Now we've turned the page and we're on to 22, 23, uh, 21, 22 was memorable. And we're hoping we can write another chapter in this book that is uh, equal or better than that. Sounds good. Well, best of luck against the Bulldogs this weekend. Hasty. It's great to have you here. Great to start up the podcast again and, and get this going uh, week after week. And, and uh, college hockey season is here. Yeah, thanks, Freddie. I look forward to it. Let's see if we can keep the snow away for as long as possible. <laughs> yes, uh, So we can come in here in just a, a sweatshirt. I'd like that, but I, I've just got an idea that it's it's uh, few and far between. But I appreciate you having you or having me here and, and what you're doing for us. Well, you appreciate it, too. And uh, this has been the Maverick Hockey Live podcast presented by Duncan. That's Mike Hastings. I'm Shane Frederick. We'll see you next time. Oh, 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 oh,